It's Thursday, the 15th day of June, 2023. Your day with the podcast brought to you by Cowboy State Daily. Check them out at CowboyStateDaily.com. We're working our way through the end of the week, a period of time over the last three or four weeks, which has been cool and wet for many of you. And we've got more coming, but then some changes. We've got a cold front and a trough that's coming through the Northwest United States that will be sweeping through the Rockies today and Friday. It's going to bring a fair amount of weather with more showers, thunderstorms, flooding concerns, and what is going to be some pretty cool temperatures for a 48-hour period before we start to see those changes coming. So this front is going to keep us cool and wet, but then behind the front, the drier, more stable air coming in behind it, by Sunday and Monday is going to instigate a bit of a change in the weather pattern across western areas of North America. But there's still plenty of weather in June. It's just going to kind of take on a little bit of a different flavor. So for today and into Friday, it is going to cool off. Temperatures will be well below average. Showers and thunderstorms are going to develop. We've got flood watches in effect for a large part of Wyoming, parts of western Nebraska, because of all of the rain and the potential for heavy rain with some of the showers and thunderstorms today and into Friday, we could see some localized flooding. Now, a drier, warmer trend Sunday into Monday will be developing. It's not going to be picture perfect, but certainly the warmer, drier trend for a couple of days will give folks a break from this current weather pattern that we've been in. Also, we're going to discuss about the North American monsoon at the end of this podcast. That's something we haven't talked about yet because it hasn't developed and we'll tell you why it hasn't developed yet and maybe kind of an outlook for the rest of the summer as July and August precipitation is really tied very strongly to that North American monsoon pattern. The satellite photo this morning showing a very nice well-developed swirl there over southeastern areas of Alberta and then here's the front and the trough coming through the region. So you can see all the cloud cover and the high humidity air with it. The dry air we saw and showed you yesterday is still behind it right here. We've got to get all of this cloud mass to come through. Now it is moving. That omega block is breaking down and this low is going to be skedaddling off to the east rather quickly here over the next 24 to 48 hours. This is the air mass right here that gets pushed in by Sunday into Monday. But we've got to get through today, tomorrow, and part of Saturday before things start to change. All of these showers and thunderstorms giving us great sunsets, great rainbow shots. And there after a thunderstorm near Cheyenne last night, a great shot of those beautiful colors that you get when you get the sun setting with these low hanging clouds from these showers and thunderstorms. So here's the trough, the cold front trailing in behind it, moving into Yellowstone National Park here in the early parts of the day and across northwest Montana and into Idaho there. So as the system tracks eastward, it is going to drag through a good chance of showers and thunderstorms, a concentrated area of moisture from the low up here, circling back, coming on through. So while the showers and thunderstorms are going to move quicker, we saw that yesterday, then the last previous days when they've moved very slowly, they will be able to concentrate a lot of moisture together in these showers and storms. So watch out for some localized flooding. There's that drier air mass we're all kind of wanting to see slide in here by the weekend. This is where showers and thunderstorms are going to be forming by afternoon, but we may even later this morning, even before the noon hour, showers and thunderstorms are going to be developing along the frontal boundary and east of the frontal boundary as it heads east. You can see a lot of concentration of thunderstorm activity here where severe weather will be possible. Severe weather possible in the southeast again, possible today as well. This is what the precipitation forecast is showing where the showers and storms will be most common through tomorrow evening. So you can see a concentration there in central Wyoming, north central, west central Wyoming, Casper to Lander, up to near Sheridan and Buffalo and across parts of the southern Bighorn Basin. And then anywhere you see blue and yellow, there's going to be the threat of heavier showers or thunderstorms. So that's why we do have some flooding concerns. And this is where the flood watches are in effect. So flood watches are in effect for a good portion of Wyoming through today and into tonight because of these showers and storms. By Saturday morning, the low is up east into eastern Montana, weakening a little bit. And as we've been discussing all week, this westerly flow of air comes in. Now, the last several weeks, 
We've had this dominating flow of a southeast wind coming in from the high and a north wind and a wind also counterclockwise coming up from the south, concentrating the moisture in this same area. So we're changing all of that. So instead of these converging winds like this, we have these westerly winds that are coming in for Sunday and into early next week. That's going to offer up some changes. However, look how cool it's going to be. This is for tomorrow, for noon tomorrow. We've got a deviation in temperatures from average of nearly 25 degrees around Casper. So what this means is many parts of Wyoming will only be in the 50s and low 60s tomorrow. 60s in many areas of Colorado. Talking about some pretty cool temperatures back into Utah, back into the Great Basin, back into Arizona as well with this system. So summer just keeps being on hold. As we get into Sunday though, this is Friday, this is Sunday. So you can see there's a, a big warm up coming along and east of the divide. And while these aren't any record breaking temperatures by any means, it is going to be warmer with temperatures actually a little bit above average by Sunday and into Monday. So we're going to salvage the weekend. Saturday is going to show improvements. We're still going to have showers and thunderstorms in Colorado on Saturday here. And I think probably the far southern counties of Wyoming will have to deal with some thunderstorms Saturday. But Saturday actually starts to show improvement in this region up here. Showers and storms hang on a little bit longer Saturday here, but drier, warmer conditions come in for that Sunday, Monday time frame. Now, by the middle of next week, this is Wednesday, we do have a low that's going to set up shop over Saskatchewan and Alberta and kind of sit there. Now, I'll show you a map here in a minute, but that's going to bring cool, wet weather to the forest fire areas of Alberta again. So that's going to be really good news there. But southwest flow into the middle of next week into the Rockies and Plain States means warmer conditions. So things are changing, just not immediately, kind of a slow and evolvement of weather pattern changes. But we are seeing things looking and acting differently late this weekend, heading into next week. Now I talked to you about the Canada. Now this is the 10 day forecast. So this goes through first half of next weekend. And you can see a concentration of some really good rain right here over Northern a lot of Alberta, a lot of Saskatchewan up there, and also parts of northeastern areas of Canada that need rain. So that's going to help out with the smoke. That's going to help out with fighting those fires there. Let's talk about the North American monsoon. This is the pattern that brings the summertime thunderstorm pattern to parts of the western United States. Not all, but parts of. It's a natural flow of moisture that comes up out of Mexico and Central America and into the western United States, and we call it the summer monsoon. This is why a lot of times uh, in the western states you get an increase, usually sometime in July and August, continuing into early September for the Rockies, but the monsoon tends to start in June in places like Arizona, New Mexico, southwest Texas, even the deserts of California. And this is the idealized pattern. This is what you would say would be your typical setup to bring the moisture northward into the region. You get a high that sets up over the southern plains. A typical high will start to set up around here and will migrate kind of back and forth from the Great Basin to the southern plains. You see that back and forth of this high during the summer. But when it gets here, the clockwise circulation, again, kind of similar to what we've been seeing, but a different set of circumstances, that brings up moisture from the south and east. And then we have this low that sets up near the Baja. Now, we call this a heat low. This isn't necessarily a big trough, but due to the heat building in the deserts of California, Arizona, and Mexico, the hot conditions create an area of low pressure, which starts a counterclockwise wind circulation around that, that heat low right there. And that also helps draw moisture. So that, again, they work in unison to draw moisture northward. Now, one thing that happens in the monsoon season is that sometimes it will get as far north as Montana, but you see these darker blue areas. This is where the monsoon patterns tend to be a little bit more prevalent in terms of the active shower and thunderstorm activities that moisture is drawn around. Usually by this time, usually by the middle of June, you start to see an uptick in showers and thunderstorms over 
uh, the many areas of Arizona, many areas of southern and western areas of New Mexico. But so far, we haven't seen it yet. Why? Well, the monsoon is tied very strongly to sea surface temperatures. You know that watching this podcast, I talk about sea surface temperatures all the time. And in the monsoon pattern, this is a real important factor. There is a lot of research out there, some studies recently that have really studied what causes the onset of the monsoon. Sort of what do you need to kind of push you across the finish line to get those summertime showers and thunderstorms going in the southwestern United States and eventually the Rockies. Well, the Gulf of California area is really, really important. And what's very important is how warm those waters get. So you need to get those water temperatures up to near 80 degrees for that water vapor to go into the air to help feed the development of showers and thunderstorms. You need those warmer waters. Just like you get when we talk about El Nino, the warmer the water is, the more water vapor that's going up into the air that eventually can turn in the clouds and showers and thunderstorms. So you need to get that heat built up in the deserts to warm up the sea surface temperatures in the Gulf of California to help really get things going. Now, in really strong monsoon seasons, when you get into sea surface temperatures there that are in the lower to mid 80s, you tend to have a strong monsoon. Last year, the monsoon in the southwest United States was very, very strong. A lot of rain last year in Arizona and New Mexico in June, July, and August. So you got to look at those sea surface temperatures to kind of get things going. That is why we're not there yet. The monsoon is delayed. And this eventually could mean a little bit of a later start as well for many parts of the Rockies and the High Plains to get the monsoon going. Why? Well, because of the winter. If you look at temperatures over the last 120 days, so basically this takes us from the, uh, the early part, let's say as you get on back into February, March, April, May timeframe, you all know that it was a cold winter, not only in Wyoming and Colorado and parts of the Western High Plains, but look how cool temperatures have been consistently compared to average, really since the beginning of the year. And if you go look at Arizona and Southern California, down into the Baja of California, well, temperatures overall consistently have been below average. They've been below average over the Northern Gulf of California. So it's no surprise that we look at the sea surface temperature anomalies in the Gulf of California. Well, we're not at that magic 26 Celsius yet, or that 79 degrees Fahrenheit. Look at the Northern areas of the Gulf of California here. Only 23, 24 degrees Celsius. Now we've got 26 degrees Celsius and warmer down here. So that is going to start to feed shower and thunderstorm development in Mexico in the next couple of weeks. We'll start to see it. But we've got to get this water temperature pattern up here warmer to get the monsoon going for Arizona, New Mexico, the deserts of California, and then eventually lifting more northward. Does this mean there will be no monsoon season? No, it doesn't mean that, but it is off to a late start. So it's not going to be as productive as it was a year ago when the sea surface temperatures were much warmer in the Gulf of California than they are now. And a colder winter season certainly has impacted things. So this is a situation where the cold, wet winter in Arizona and the southwest United States is responsible for the delayed onset of the summertime monsoon. So you see there's some interconnection with what happened over the winter to kind of what's happening now. So that's something that we're gonna monitor and talk about going forward as we're finally starting to see patterns begin to change. Have yourself a good Thursday. See you tomorrow.